In this video, we will cover the steps on solving uh, simple force problems. That means force problems specifically without diagonal forces. So here are six simple steps for solving any force problem. First of all, you should always read the uh, question to get context, specifically paying attention to whether the object is moving or accelerating, and in which direction it's both moving and accelerating. You should then draw a free body diagram or a force diagram. Make sure to keep track of its coordinate system, which way you want to make positive, which way you want to make negative. List the variables, create a customized equation uh, using Newton's second law, sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration. And then you should use the equations that you just created uh, in order to solve the problem by just plugging and chugging. And then finally, make sure to check your answer and make sure that whatever you calculated isn't a ridiculous value and somewhat makes sense. Here is an example of a really easy problem that most students are able to solve on their own, but we're going to solve it so that we can show you walking through the different steps. Using a rope, you drag a 88.3 kilogram crate along the floor with a 145 newton force. The frictional force is pulling back with 55 newtons. What is the acceleration of the crate? All right, so we just followed step one. We read it and we're getting the context. We can tell from the context of the problem that the object is accelerating. So it will have an overall unbalanced force or net force in a certain direction. Uh, let's see, we got to draw a free body diagram next. So we're going to draw a free body diagram. We know there's force of gravity going downwards. We know there's a normal force going up. We know that since it's not accelerating up or down, that these two forces are going to be equal to each other. It says in the problem that there is a force of friction backwards of 55 newtons and a force forward of 145 newtons. I've labeled this one tension because it says it was being pulled by a rope. So here is our free body diagram. I made sure to draw this one's bigger because it's bigger than friction as the numbers show. Now we're going to create a customized equation, something that's based for just this particular free body diagram. We're going to customize the equation F net equals MA or the sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration. I want to look for the acceleration. I don't know what that is, but I know the mass. All I really do when I customize is to replace this sum of all forces or F net with an expression that represents the sum of all forces. These two forces cancel out so I can ignore them and plus it's not in the horizontal direction. I really only care about the acceleration horizontally so I'm going to focus on these forces. So if I were to write an expression that added these two up, I would say that the force of tension subtracted from the force of friction would give me the total force or the sum of all forces. Now the reason I'm subtracting it is because we have to consider direction, right? If I say this way is positive, this way is negative then. So this is really a negative or a positive 145 and this is really a negative 55. So it's this value, this magnitude subtracted from this magnitude gives me the total or sum of all forces. So this replaces this statement of sum of all forces. These two uh, subtracted gives me the total, which equals mass times acceleration. Now I just plug and chug, put in my numbers, do my math, and I get an answer of 1.02 meters per second every single second. This next problem is a, is a more complicated problem that's a good example of a problem where you really need to make sure you follow all the steps. The last one we probably could have done even with skipping a free body diagram. A lot of students can figure that out without that. But uh, you should always get in the habit of always drawing your free body diagrams because they will get progressively harder. And as you solve really difficult problems, there's no way you can do it without a, or accurately without a free body diagram. So you should always get in the habit. It's something that helps you think about the problem. So let's take a look at this more difficult problem and you'll see how we really could use all of the steps to solve. So a 135 kilogram box is being pushed to the right by two men, but it does not move. Billy is pushing with 240 newtons of force and Sam is pushing with 312 newtons of force. They want us to calculate the normal force on the box and the force of friction. After reading it, I know from context that this object is not accelerating in any direction and so therefore the net force in all directions should be equal to zero. Next step, we need to draw our free body diagram. So we start off with the force of gravity going downwards. There's a normal force up. Those two should be the same since it's not accelerating. There's a force of friction backwards and then there's two forces forward from Billy and Sam. These two particular forces should be the same length as this one uh, together, or these two together should be the same length as this one by itself. Here we have a nice working free body diagram. All right, step three is to find our or identify our variables. The things we know is that the mass of the block 
box is 135. We know these two forces here. Okay, those are the things we know. There's a couple of other hidden known variables, which is the accelerations. I know in the vertical direction it's not accelerating, and it's not accelerating in the horizontal, oh, sorry, vertical direction it's not accelerating, and neither is it accelerating in the horizontal. So those two accelerations are zero. All right, step four is to create a customized equation using Newton's second law to solve for both the normal force here and the force of friction here. Now, in order to do this, really, we just need to think about it. Uh, if you remember, a normal force is a reactionary force. Uh, you can't really calculate it with a specific equation. There is no given equation for normal force. The only way to find it is to compare this force to other forces around it. So what we do is we compare the, this force to other forces. I'm not going to compare it to these because they're independent. This motion is independent of this way. And I'm going to take this force and I'm going to say, okay, so how does it compare to this one? Well, it's not moving up or down or accelerating up or down, so these two must be equal to each other. So I can just jump and make a customized equation. Hey, normal force is equal to force of gravity. And I've just created an equation to solve for normal force, meaning if I find the force of gravity, I've got normal force. This equation that we've just made up actually comes from Newton's second law. A lot of people don't realize that, but that's where it actually comes from. I'd like to demonstrate that. So in Newton's second law, we do the sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration. And similar to what we did last time, we're going to replace this sum of all forces, or net force, with an expression that represents all these forces added up. Okay, so if we add up the normal force with force of gravity, they're in opposite directions, so really we're subtracting them. We're adding one and adding the other as a negative value. So we're going to do replace this sum of all forces with normal force minus force of gravity. Remember the acceleration is zero. This becomes zero. This whole term, this whole side then becomes zero. And I can simplify by adding force of gravity on both sides and I get this equation that we already knew from just thinking about it. Now we can do a very similar process for uh, the horizontal direction, right? This value should equal these two together, right? So these two added up equals force of friction. Similarly, it can come from the Newton's second law. So sum of all forces in the horizontal direction equals ma. There is no acceleration in the horizontal direction. Uh, if I were to sum this up, it would say these two added together minus this guy should give me zero. That's what we're saying. And so we can rearrange and, and we can get this equation in the end. So now we have two customized equations that works only for this particular problem because in any other problem, this free body diagram would look slightly different. This is what we mean by a customized equation. It only works for these. These are not something you would memorize because they, they're not always true. All right, step number five is to quickly just plug and chug. We're going to solve for the normal force first. In order to solve for the normal force, what we're going to do is we're going to find the force of gravity. To find the force of gravity, we use the equation for force of gravity, which is that the force of gravity is equal to mass times the gravitational field strength. Uh, since we're on Earth, the gravitational field strength is 9.81 newtons, newtons per kilogram. Okay. So we're going to plug this value in, and this this uh, thing here, since it equals force of gravity, we're going to substitute it in, and we just get normal force equals mg. And now we just plug in our values, 9.81, 135, and we solve and we get our answer. Similarly, we can plug and chug for the uh, force of friction. I just need to know these two forces, which it tells me in the problem. So I'll just plug them in and calculate my force of friction, which is 552 newtons. All right, now this next question is pretty much the exact same as the other one, but I've tweaked it ever so slightly so you can see how solving the problem would be different in a slightly different situation. Let's say everything is the same, so this problem literally is the exact same problem. The only thing different is instead of it saying uh, the two men are pushing it to the right and the box is not moving, it now says and the box is moving at a constant speed of 1.6 meters per second. So how would this change the situation? Well, according to Newton's first law, we know that an object's motion or, or velocity will remain constant unless there's a net force acting on it, right? Uh, that means that if its velocity is constant, there is no net force. Or we can think of it in Newton, terms of Newton's second law, that the net force is proportional to acceleration. Well, this there is no acceleration, so therefore there is no net force. So there's no net force when it's not moving. There's no net force when it is moving at a constant speed. So in other words, this problem is going to be pretty much the exact same as the problem we just did, even though it's moving at a constant speed. Let's take a look. When we draw our free body diagram, 
The net force is still zero horizontally, so these two still equal this one. The net force vertically is still zero, so this equals this. And we come out to the exact same equations, therefore, and we get the exact same solutions. Everything is identical with the first problem. Same equations, same free body diagram, same solution. All right, so this last th example is, the ex again, the exact same problem, but this time we're having the box actually accelerate to one side. You'll see that, again, the problem is very, very similar, but there is a difference when it's actually accelerating. In this case, since acceleration is proportional to net force and there is a value for acceleration, that means there will be a total net force or an unbalanced force on this object. One of the forces has got to be bigger than the other one in the other direction. So let's take a look and restart this problem from scratch, but we're going to go through it faster and just change whatever we needed to from the previous example to solve this particular problem. So if we draw a free body diagram, you will notice that all the forces are the exact same. Uh, these two forces are the same. There's a still force up, there's still a force down, and these two are still the same. The only difference is the force of friction. In order to get a total net force forward, I need force of friction to be a little bit smaller than what it was in the previous problem. There's no way the force of friction can still be 552 newtons, which is the same size as these two combined, and still have it accelerate forward. This has got to be smaller than 552 newtons. The question is, is how much smaller? That's what we need to answer in order to figure out how big force of friction is. All right, so we list our variables. Everything's pretty much the exact same, all except for now we're accelerating in one direction. Next, we uh, try and make our equation, a customized equation. Before, our customized equation was this force up equals that force down, and these two forces here equals that one force back. So the question is, is are these the same now? Well, since it's not accelerating in the vertical direction, this equation here should still be the same. F net equals ma, a is still zero vertically, right? So a sub y is in the vertical direction because the y-axis is vertical. Right, this is still zero, and so, we, hey, we can keep the same exact equation, and then our answer for the normal force will be the same as before. Uh, let's take a look in the vertical direction, right? This guy's a little bit different, so it doesn't look like it's going to be the same. Let's take a look. So if we do F net equals MA, well, the sum of all forces, when we add these all up, right, I will get, this will equal mass times acceleration. So I'm going to write the same expression I had before. These two added up subtracted by this one should give me the total force horizontally, the overall unbalanced net force horizontally, which equals ma. But remember, this a is no longer zero. So this doesn't go away, and I can't just move this over here and make these two sides equal. That just is not going to happen. I have to leave a as an actual term, and it has to stay there because there is an actual acceleration. So. I have to leave the equation in this form, and I won't be able to simplify it to the, way, the same way I had before. Now let's take these equations and actually solve. As we said before, the equation or the answer for normal force is identical. The, the answer for friction, though, is slightly different. Let's plug in our values and see what happens. We're still going to plug in uh, the forces for Billy and Sam, and now we just have the only difference is we have a mass and an acceleration now in this equation. So we're going to simplify this, and we get 552 minus the force of friction should give me this amount, 310.5 newtons. What does that mean? Well, that means when you take these two forces together, right, which is 552, and subtract it from this, you need a leftover force of 310 in order to get an object that's 135 kilograms to accelerate at a rate of 2.3 uh, uh, meters per second every single second. This is, this MA determines how big the leftover unbalanced portion of the force needs to be, right? So it'll tell you what the difference is between this side and this side, the leftover amount. Now we just need to do our algebra and rearrange, right? So I can uh, add this to this, or sorry, subtract this to this side and add this to this side to move th some things around. And I get uh, these two subtracted and I just subtract them and I get my answer of 241.5 newtons for the force of friction. And you'll notice when I subtract these two together, which is 552, from this value, I get the net force that's required 
310 in order to accelerate at uh, 2.3 meters per second every single second. Now it's your turn to try and solve. Good luck.